Salut, c'est Hugo. J'espère que vous allez bien. Cette semaine, dans la grande histoire, je voulais vous partager un doc de nos journalistes Gabriel Niang et Théo Simon sur l'affaire Patricia Hearst. Patricia Hearst, c'est l'héritière d'un mania de la presse américaine. Elle mène une vie normale avec son fiancé en Californie jusqu'à son enlèvement en 1974. Ses ravisseurs un groupuscule terroriste d'extrême gauche appelé l'armée de libération symbionnaise. À cette époque, en fait, on ne sait pas grand chose de ce groupuscule révolutionnaire. On sait juste qu'ils veulent que la famille Hearst distribue de l'argent aux plus pauvres de San Francisco. Ça ressemble à une affaire de kidnapping assez banale jusqu'au jour où la presse met la main sur des enregistrements de la jeune fille en captivité. Sous le pseudo de Tania, elle tient à présent le même discours que ses ravisseurs. Elle dit vouloir rester avec eux pour combattre et participe même arme à la main à plusieurs braquages. Patty Hearst était-elle sous emprise je vous laisse regarder le documentaire et on se retrouve juste après. La nuit dernière, effectivement, à Los Angeles, aux États-Unis, une fusillade. La police a investi après un assaut de plus d'une heure. Une maison individuelle dans l'un des beaux quartiers de la ville. L'action a été dirigée contre des membres du LS1, c'est-à-dire l'armée symbionnaise de libération, le groupe qui avait enlevé en février Patricia Hearst. Everybody first heard about Patty Hearst the night she was kidnapped. Patricia Campbell Hearst, a 19-year-old student, was taken from her apartment and her fiancé, Stephen Weed, was beaten and had to be hospitalized. Lundi soir, elle a été enlevée par des inconnus dans des circonstances très violentes et malgré la fortune de la famille, on se demande s'il va s'agir véritablement d'une affaire de rançon. Patricia Hearst lived in a quiet, well-to-do section of Berkeley. She was dragged out to the street by the men who were armed with rifles. Her fiancé said from his hospital bed today, the abductors acted like commandos. La SLA lui fait enregistrer des bandes qui sont diffusées à la radio, à la télévision. Mom, Dad, I'm okay. Dans l'affaire Patricia Hearst, on voit bien qu'il y a un mécanisme d'emprise. The first case covered by the media after the kidnapping was the robbing of the Hibernia Bank. She was in the bank, she had a machine gun. The only question was, was she there voluntarily or was she there because they would kill her? My name is Francis Lee Bailey Jr., but I am known in most countries as F. Lee Bailey, a criminal defense lawyer. Private defense lawyer F. Lee Bailey is a superstar, a string of famous criminal acquittals behind him. He's flamboyant, flies his own helicopter, manipulates the press. I defended Patty Hearst, and uh, a little while later, O.J. Simpson. So. I kept pretty busy. During the 60s, there was a great deal of rebellious uprising among the youngsters, beginning perhaps with the festival at Woodstock, which was peaceful, but there was a lot of unrest. And by the 70s, there were a number of radical uh, groups out there who fancied themselves as serving the United States by burning flags. And that got a lot of news, but also caused a lot of damage. And that's where Patty Hearst erupted.
C'était la fille d'un manière de la presse, c'est la famille Hearst. Donc c'était un empire très comparable à celui de Trump, qui était un empire médiatique, un empire très conservateur. Patricia a eu l'enfance d'une petite fille riche, sage et effectivement parfaite. Et en même temps, c'est une enfance totalement solitaire, puisqu'elle est tout le temps éduquée par des nounous. Patty Hearst was a very wealthy, completely unremarkable young lady, never got in trouble, uh, was not the biggest loudmouth in her family. Ses parents n'attendent pas grand-chose d'elle, à part qu'elle se marie, qu'elle fasse des enfants. Au fond, son père n'a même pas l'intention qu'elle travaille dans l'Empire Hearst. Et c'est une jeune fille dont personne n'a jamais entendu parler. Et ça, c'est important, parce que finalement, elle va, elle va naître médiatiquement au moment où elle disparaît. Quand Patricia est enlevée, on a le récit de Patricia enlevée par un groupuscule d'extrême gauche complètement inconnu, l'armée de libération symbionnaise, la SLA. L'armée de libération symbionnaise est une des organisations terroristes les plus secrètes et les plus récentes aussi. L'emblème, ce cobra à sept têtes, qui représente les sept principes de l'unité qui doivent permettre de, je cite, se libérer des chaînes du capitalisme. Ce mouvement, rejeté par les autres organisations de gauche, même extrémistes, n'était pas jusqu'à présent pris très au sérieux. Eh bien, aujourd'hui, il fait peur. C'est son père, enfin c'est Hearst, qui choisit les photos pour parler de l'événement, en tout cas dans la presse Hearst. Donc, qu'est-ce qu'il choisit Il choisit des photos d'elle en communiante. Donc, il y a vraiment une image de la jeune fille euh, euh, blanche, riche, euh, qui a été enlevée par euh, des sauvages. There was a group called the SLA and their leader who called himself Sing Q. Well, these people always had great names for themselves. And he just liked causing trouble. And I mean big trouble. My name is Sin Q. I am a black man and a representative of black people. Using dynamite, real weapons, shooting people, robbing banks, blowing up police stations, and putting bombs under police cruisers. So this kid was no juvenile delinquent. He was a very dangerous criminal, and he had quite a following. Our unified purpose is to liberate the oppressed peoples of this nation and the robbery of their freedom and homeland. La SLA, ce qui est très frappant, c'est que ce sont des jeunes gens banals. Ce ne sont pas des figures qu'on peut ériger vraiment en monstre d'un point de vue médiatique. Ce sont des étudiantes et des étudiants qui jugent le capitalisme américain. A warning to the fascist corporate military state. We have declared revolutionary war upon you, the enemy of the people. Et puis, très vite, il commence à y avoir un doute dans la narration, puisque le, la SLA lui fait enregistrer des bandes euh, qui sont diffusées à, à la radio, à la télévision. The long-awaited ransom demand from the Symbionese Liberation Army finally has arrived, and with it, a tape of Patty Hearst's voice. Mom, Dad, I'm okay. Um... I I had a few scrapes and stuff, but um, they washed them up and they're getting okay. And I've caught a cold, but they're giving me pills for it. And so uh, I'm not being starved or beaten or unnecessarily frightened. Um, I've heard some press reports, and so I know that Steve and all the neighbors are okay. It is therefore the directive of this court that an action of good faith be shown on the part of the Hearst family. This gesture is to be in the form of food to the needy and the unemployed. The Simeonese Liberation Army was trying to posture itself 
kind of like Robin Hood. Steal from the rich, give to the poor. An extremely distraught Mr. and Mrs. Hurst spoke directly to their daughter this morning. We love you, Patty, and we're all praying for you. I know those people, they had good ideals. They're just going about them the wrong way. Patty, I hope you're listening. It's a little frightening because the original demand is what I was afraid of from the beginning, is that one that's impossible to meet. However, uh, in the next 24 or 48 hours, I'll be trying to do my best to come back with some kind of a counteroffer uh, that's acceptable. C'est une phrase terrible quand il s'agit de votre fille de dire je vais faire une contre-proposition. On parle pas d'un contrat, on parle de, de sa fille. Gentlemen, I just like to make this statement. Arrangements have been made for two million dollars to be delivered to a tax-exempt charitable organization. Well, this amount, half a million dollars, represent my own fund. Do you think they'll be satisfied? Well, I'm, uh, this is a gesture of goodwill. There's no guarantee Patricia is going to get home on this. I've, uh, this is a an honest effort on my part to do what I can, and that's all I can do. And I think it's up to them now to make, to believe me, and to hopefully make her a gesture of their own. Son père va la marchander. Elle assiste au marchandage d'un milliardaire qui euh, fait appel aux dons, qui euh, mégote sur euh, quelques centaines de milliers de dollars qu'il a. Elle le sait très bien. Deux fois par semaine, des camions partent de l'entrepôt pour ravitailler une douzaine de centres de distribution des quartiers pauvres de San Francisco et de la banlieue. La liste des centres est annoncée la veille au soir et dès 6h du matin, les queues se forment pour toucher un sac ou un carton contenant de la viande, du pain, du lait en poudre, des légumes et des boîtes de conserve. La plupart de ceux qui viennent le font avec honte parce qu'ils comprennent que cette nourriture est le produit d'un chantage dont la vie d'une jeune fille est l'enjeu. Hey man, that was fucked up what they did, man. What the? Throwing the food out the truck, they should have done that. That was foul, that was obscene, it was really foul. Les caméras suivent et on se rend compte que autour de la, de, du manoir, finalement, en Californie, il y a des millions de gens qui meurent de faim. Et Patricia Hearst, elle assiste à ça. Donc, il y a une sorte de preuve tout à fait concrète du mensonge dans lequel elle a été enfermée comme petite fille riche. C'est une jeune fille dont la voix va commencer à changer au fur et à mesure des messages, dont la voix commence à s'affermir. J'entends chez elle qu'elle dit qu'elle ne compte plus pour rien. Il y a eu une manipulation psychique qui tendait à lui faire penser que ses parents n'en avaient plus rien à faire d'elle. Rapidement, quand on est baïonné, euh, enfermé et qu'on vous ouvre uniquement le placard pour vous donner à manger ou pour vous emmener euh, aux toilettes, vous ne vous sentez plus rien en fait. Assez rapidement, ça, ça, ça vient assez vite. Vous savez qu'il y a des otages de guerre qui ne savent même plus leur prénom à la fin. Ils ne savent même plus leur nom. À partir du moment où la presse euh, commence à avoir son, son avis euh, totalement fait, c'est-à-dire que personne n'hésite, c'est un lavage de cerveau, il est impossible qu'une jeune fille ait une opinion politique. Elle répond aux journalistes avec les bandes, elle répond à ses parents. Je n'ai jamais été forcée à dire quelque chose sur any tape, ni j'ai été brainwashed, drugged, 
tortured, hypnotized, or in any way confused. As for my ex-fiancé, during the last few months, Stephen has shown himself to be a sexist, ageist pig. I'm amazed that he thinks that the first thing that I would want to do once freed would be to rush and see him. The fact is, I don't care if I ever see him again. I think it's clear that she is she's reading something that someone else wrote. Quand une jeune fille déclare euh, son adhésion à quelque chose de radical, on ne peut pas euh, penser que c'est elle qui choisit. It's me, the way I want it, the way I see it. I've been given the choice of one, being released in a safe area, or two, joining the forces of the Symbionese Liberation Army and fighting for my freedom and the freedom of all oppressed people. I have chosen to stay and fight. I have been given the name Tanya. Patricia Hearst est souvent euh, utilisée comme exemple pour illustrer ce qu'est le syndrome de Stockholm. Le syndrome de Stockholm, il a été décrit en 1978 par un psychiatre américain pour la première fois. Donc c'est ce sentiment finalement de, de sympathie en fait qui va s'installer de la part des otages face aux ravisseurs. L'otage doit s'identifier à certaines valeurs qu'il va repérer chez son ravisseur. C'est un, un tour de passe-passe en fait du psychisme pour pouvoir survivre psychiquement à une situation où on se sent menacé de mort. Greetings to the people. This is Tanya. On April 15th, my comrades and I expropriated $10,000 from the Hibernia Bank. I was positioned so that I could hold customers and bank personnel who were on the floor. My gun was loaded. I am a soldier in the people's arms. C'est difficile de savoir si Patricia a pris conscience en fait de l'importance qu'elle était en train d'avoir médiatiquement. Ce qui m'avait vraiment beaucoup frappé, c'est la contagion dans les collèges et dans les lycées de l'époque. Ils faisaient des, des jeux où ils étaient Tania. Parce que finalement, elle accomplit le fantasme total. Le fantasme de l'adolescence d'envoyer balader tout le monde, vos parents, la société, mais devant tout le monde. Patricia Hearst said her name was Tanya, had a machine gun. And when a bank was robbed, they liked to put Patty right in the front row so that the press and all the bank people would see that it was her. On April 15th, five members of the SLA robbed the Hibernia Bank in San Francisco. Two people were shot during the robbery. The SLA gang got away with more than $10,000. The robbery was filmed by the bank's automatic cameras. The FBI said the girl in the wig with the automatic rifle was Patricia Hurst. I was positioned so that I could hold customers and bank personnel who were on the floor. My gun was loaded. Personally, I don't believe it. We've had her 20 years, they've had her 60 days. And I don't believe that she's going to change her philosophies that quickly or that permanently. And I'll, I'll never believe it. Toute cette agressivité qu'elle a reçue, je pense qu'elle la retourne. Quand on a violenté quelqu'un et qu'on lui donne une arme à la main, ça peut tout à fait lui donner envie de tirer. Ça peut tout à fait, finalement, euh, lui donner envie de ne plus être l'otage, mais d'être euh, celle. Euh, qui, qui, qui tient l'arme. C'est ça qui, qui lui arrive, c'est qu'elle ne voit plus la vie de la même manière. 
Mais on ne sait pas exactement ce qui se passe dans sa tête. On ne sait pas. My name is Tom Matthews. Uh, I'm 65 years old. I was 18 years old on May 16th, 1974, when I met Patty Hearst in the SLA. That was a lot of years ago. Wouldn't you like to go back to that in a little bit? Yeah. For a minute? Because you look the same. <laughs> <laughs> you do, I'd pick you up. I think the most was how scared we were that night. You didn't even know we were so afraid. Yeah, yeah. We thought you might not, we might not see you again. I figured you were, I figured you might be dead. Yeah. Luckily, we, we got you back. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It was about seven o'clock in the evening and there was a knock on my door. And it was a woman wanting to test drive my van. I had a Ford Econoline van for sale. So she asked if she could test drive the van. And she just went one block and turned the corner and stopped. And I saw a car parked across the street and she asked if her friends could come along on the test drive. And I was pretty carefree. I said, sure, no problem. The one gentleman who come to find out was William Harris. He opened up my door and then he opened up his coat and he had a machine gun. He said, if I didn't do anything flaky, I wouldn't get hurt. And my immediate response was, as long as I didn't get shot, I didn't care what happened. And then the last person got in and um, he pointed to her and she had a black curly wig on. And he said, do you know who this is? And I, I said, no. He said, this is Tanya. And because of all of the news broadcasts that I had seen, I knew that that was Patty Hearst. And my first words out of my mouth were, my friends are not going to believe this story. As they picked me up at seven, we drove around a little while. We were talking sports, because I, I told them I had a baseball game the very next day. And then I asked them why they robbed the Hibernia Bank, because that was the real famous picture of her holding the machine gun. They told me they were fighting a civil war against the United States government and they needed the money. And that's when she told me that she was a willing participant in the bank robbery. Patty was in the van with me because she kept kind of patting me. She was, I could tell she was like concerned that I was afraid because she could kind of picture when she was kidnapped, how she felt. So she was trying to comfort me. And Patty Hearst actually gave me a little kiss on the cheek. Um, <laughs> and so that night when we went to, to sleep in the van, they gave me the one blanket because they knew that I hadn't been feeling good. So they said, here, Tom, you, you know, you get the blanket. And so they were nice to me. They offered me food, gas money. So when I woke up in the morning, William Harris was in the back of the van with me. He, and he did vaguely threaten me. He kind of said, you don't, I didn't have to tell the police everything that I knew. They knew where I lived, but I, I didn't, I didn't feel threatened. And that's how, that's why when they left me, because they had carjacked another vehicle in the morning. And so I drove all the way home. I walked inside my house and uh, my girlfriend, now my wife, Susan, had spent the night at my house. Things could have gone sideways, but like I said, the good Lord had a plan for us. Yeah, that's right. Five grandkids, three kids. Now we just have all this to leave behind. I don't know if anybody would truly understand the gravity of this case unless they lived it. I was a little relieved that, you know, the, the evening was over, that I got to get back to my, my, uh, my life. Um, I slept for about four hours. So then I go and play my baseball game. So the game started about 3.30, and, and then that's about half an hour 
or so later is when the shootout started. The big fiery shootout. La nuit dernière, effectivement, à Los Angeles, aux États-Unis, une fusillade. La police a investi après un assaut de plus d'une heure une maison individuelle dans l'un des beaux quartiers de la ville. Oui, il va y avoir euh, cet événement incroyable qui est leur, euh, leur traque et puis leur fin par un nombre incroyable de, de policiers qui est filmé en direct, diffusé pour la première fois dans l'histoire de la télé. Let's see if we couldn't still get this picture, but from a little better location, huh? Well, I don't know if it's a good idea to interview somebody right now. <laughs> we just took a bullet a couple inches or so because we felt it go by. We felt it go by, that's for... <laughs> and heard it. And heard it. And that's as close as I want to be to one, let me tell you. So everybody was glued to the television watching the shooting, and, and at the time, Everybody thought Patty was in the house. I, I was I was anxious. I would have hated to, if, to know that she was in that house. So then they did a dental records check, and it was either late Saturday or, or Sunday morning. They announced that she was not in the house, that she was still alive. Elle regarde ça depuis euh, une chambre d'hôtel où elle est euh, cachée avec deux membres de la SLA. Et elle comprend que si elle avait été dans la maison, le FBI l'aurait tué. Greetings to the people. This is Tanya. It's hard to explain what it was like watching our comrades die. I died in that fire on 54th Street. But out of the ashes, I was reborn. I know what I have to do. Life is very precious to me. Or choose to live the rest of my life surrounded by pigs like the Hursts. Death to the fascist insect that preys upon the life of the people. There is no surrender. C'est le double traumatisme en fait. Il y a le premier traumatisme où elle est enlevée et le deuxième traumatisme où finalement elle se rend compte qu'en fait le FBI se fout complètement d'elle. Ce sera un dégât collatéral, vous voyez ce que je veux dire. The day they caught Patty Hearst, she gave a clenched fist salute and listed herself as an urban gorilla. À son arrestation, le clan Hearst se reconstitue parce que c'est une marque. C'est un emblème et que donc on est là pour protéger aussi euh, un symbole de euh, la famille. We had a very happy conversation about family matters and the friends that she asked about. Was she glad to see you? She was. We told her we loved her and hugged her and kissed her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You've all been wonderful. Okay, that's a I was sitting in a woman's prison when the warden brought me his personal telephone and said there's a man on the phone who claims he's Randy Hearst and he wants to talk to you. And by then, everybody in the world was waiting to find out who her lawyer would be. Private defense lawyer F. Lee Bailey is a superstar, a string of famous criminal acquittals behind him. He's flamboyant, flies his own helicopter, manipulates the press. How much do you think it is a benefit to Patty to have a big shot lawyer? How much does her success depend on that? It depends principally on her testimony, and any lawyer that had a witness as good as she is and couldn't <clears throat> convince a jury that she was telling the truth would be, not have done a good job. The Hearst case was the worst case I've ever had to handle because every way you turn, there was another crime. Bombing police cars, shooting a machine gun into a crowd, two bank robberies. If I put up a defense in one case, it bumped right into bad evidence in another case. It was a nightmare. It was early this morning when Patricia Hurst arrived at the Alameda County Courthouse here in Oakland. Now demurely dressed, sometimes near tears, she tells the jury of the horrors of kidnapping, of being terrified, brainwashed, her lawyer says, by the SLA. 
Is that the truth or is she lying? An important part of being brainwashed is that your IQ goes down until you recover. The first meeting, she probably didn't say 10 words. She was all huddled up in a little cocoon. And she just sat there. She just smiled and nodded her head. Après le syndrome de Stockholm, euh, il est probable, si vous voulez, que pendant cette cavale, elle soit en cours de réorganisation psychique. Il est probable qu'elle ait un, un trouble de stress post-traumatique, c'est-à-dire des grandes difficultés finalement à, à retrouver qui elle est, en fait. Je, je pense qu'elle elle se réorganise psychiquement. Attorney F. Lee Bailey put his version of Patricia Hearst's defense simply and perhaps literally today. Somebody put a gun at my head and I did what they told me to do. Our defense was, they said, step out of line one little bit, we'll blow your head off. Step out of line two little bits, the cops will blow your head off. Although sentenced to seven years, Patricia Hearst will not have to serve the entire term. She has already spent one year in jail, for which she will be given credit, and she becomes eligible for parole in 16 months. The case was a success only in one respect. I was hired to prevent her from spending the rest of her life behind bars. She did spend only three years in prison that is called success. Il n'y a pas de vérité dans cette affaire. C'est ce qui est extraordinairement fascinant, c'est qu'il n'y a pas de vrai faux. Je ne crois pas qu'elle soit devenue une marxiste militante. Je crois qu'elle se battait pour sa liberté. J'espère que ça vous a plu. Un grand merci à Gabriel Niang et à Théo Simon ainsi qu'à toutes les équipes de Brut qui ont participé à la réalisation de ce format. N'hésitez pas à mettre un like et à vous abonner à la chaîne Brut pour ne rien rater des prochaines vidéos et des prochains documentaires. Et moi je vous dis à la semaine prochaine.